Today I will do simple watercolor and add subtle shading with woodless coloring pencils. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to Creative Coloring with Iram. Today I have a watercolor floral card to share with you. I kept the layout clean and simple and used the stamp set a little differently. I also added some pencil detail to my image. I will use the Paint a Flower China Rose Outline Stamp Set. Since this is the first time I'm using this set, I will use the stamp conditioning eraser to remove any residue that is on the stamp so it can hold on to the ink better. Next, I will stamp only one flower from this stamp onto eight watercolor cardstock. So I am only stamping this partially. I use Obsidian Pigment Ink to stamp. My flower is going to be purple today, but I will also use a bit of pink on some of the petals just to add a bit of variation and warmth. If you want to move towards a cooler tone, you can add a bit of blue or turquoise to the petals or only use purple. I will start by applying water to the petal and then I will add some pigment from the artist's watercolor 24 pan set. I will then spread the pigment outwards to the tip of the petal. I am using two brushes here, one has pigment and one is clean with just water. I will also drop in pink whenever I feel like it at the moment. There is no rhyme or rhythm to it. So do as you like. Just remember that I am keeping the areas closer to the flower center or the base of the petals darker and the tips slightly lighter. I will keep on working on one petal at a time. Sometimes I will skip the adjacent petal and sometimes if I know I can handle coloring two adjacent petals by leaving a thin space in between, I will go ahead with edit. Once I've added the first layer of color to the petal, I will add a darker, more concentrated pigment to the base of the petal and pull it outwards slightly to blend it using the clean brush. I will repeat the same thing with all the petals. Now it is up to you how to blend the pigment or pull it outwards. Mostly I use the stippling technique where I lightly bounce or dab the brush repeatedly to create a soft texture on the petals. Today I am blending the pigment smoothly so you can see this as a smooth satin finish. To add details to the petals, I will use a slightly pigmented watercolor and add a bit of it to the tip of the petal wherever I see a cut, bend or notch. Then I will enhance this point by extending it and adding more emphasis to this. You will notice that I do this on a few petals but not on all of the petals. You have to keep it natural looking if you are coloring like this. And just by adding a slight depth, I can show that there is a dip in the petal. I will color the leaves in the similar manner. I will start by adding a cooler green shade. This is green meadows, which I will add at the base of the leaf and extend it along the midrib. I will also add a little bit of blue to this and there is no need to add blue, it's just my preference. I like to play with shades by mixing various um, uh, colors to make my own custom shade. Once the image has dried, I will use a sapphire woodless coloring pencil close to the base of the petal in very small circular motion. And to soften this dark pigment, I will then use Midnight Violet with less coloring pencil. And I will extend this outwards towards the petal, uh, to the tip of the petal, but not entirely, uh, just enough so that I can blend this beautifully. 
and you will immediately see that the little bit of um, pencil detailing makes quite a bit of difference. Now this is your preference, how much detail you want to add. Here I am not adding a lot of detail. I'm only doing minimal work. And I did the same with the leaf. I used Sapphire, Shadow Creek, Grass Field and Limeade coloring pencils. Though I didn't need so many but I had the variety and the texture looked so cool that I kept adding it. Because I am using the A2 watercolor cardstock and it has a little bit of tooth to it. And when I used the woodless uh, coloring pencil over it, it uh, showed the texture through. Once done, I will fussy cut the image. Next, I cut out a circle using half tone circles die set out of essential black and white paper pack. You can use any of uh, the papers from this pack if you like. Then I added black paint splatters onto my card front and adhered everything with instant dimension foam tape. I hope you liked my card and would also try to use your stamps a little differently. You can also use multiple media on your card to enhance it even more as I did by adding pencil details to my watercolor flower. Thank you for watching. Bye.